We just saw how many of the concepts and results for a single uh, one-dimensional random variable extended in a very natural way to higher dimensional random variables or random vectors. And in this video, we'll start to look at some of the new concepts that come into play. So throughout this video, we're going to fix a random vector x1, x2. We'll just specialize to the two-dimensional case in R2 with joint PMF, lowercase p. Actually, let me make this, let's make this just x and y here. Easier to write x and y than x1, x2. And just remember that this x is a single value, uh, one-dimensional random variable, not a random vector now. And the joint PMF is just by definition this thing. And now we have the definition. So we'll have a bunch of definitions here. So the marginal, marginal PMF, or sometimes we say marginal distribution of x under this for this random vector is p. Sometimes we subscript x to emphasize that it's the marginal for x of x. And it's defined by, so we, this is the notation, and it equals just the probability that x takes that, little, takes that little x value. So it's just the distribution of x. So it's called the marginal because we have other random variables floating around. And similarly, you would have the marginal of y would be p subscript y of little y equals probability that y takes a particular value. Or you can generalize that to higher dimensions. And now we have a little proposition about our new definition. The marginal, well, I'll just write it. So the marginal PMF, which is this thing, satisfies the identity. It's equal to the sum over all elements little y that this random vector, random variable y could take of the joint PMF. So we're sometimes people say we're summing out the y. So you're summing over y's and you you get rid of y and you're just left with x. And of course the same thing holds for if we had y here instead of x we would sum over the x's to get rid of x. And let me prove this briefly. So this is equal to, by definition, the probability that x takes a particular value. And by this notation, of course, we just mean the probability of the set of omegas in our space such that x of omega equals little x. And this set can be written as a union over all the y's of the sets little omega in omega where x is equal to x and y of omega is equal to little y because then this is a this is a disjoint union so first to see it's see it's a union or to see that it, this is equal you can show that for any omega here it satisfies this and so Therefore, it belongs to one of these sets because y of omega must take some value little y. And the opposite also holds because for any y, if as long as x of omega is equal to little x, then that omega belongs to this set. And it's a disjoint union because each y is different in these different sets. And so therefore, this is equal to the so by by countable additivity of a probability measure because this is a union of disjoint sets this is equal to the sum over all the y's of the probability x equals x y equals y 
That's just the probability of this set, of course, in our shorthand. And this is just the joint PMF, right? So what was the So this was our joint PMF. And that's the result. So just a just a very elementary property of the marginal. And sometimes people write for the marginal, so notation. Sometimes people will abbreviate further. So here I uh, I use this x to indicate that the marginal, it's the marginal of x. Sometimes we will write just p of x to mean the marginal of x. And the only way that you know is because I'm using a lowercase x here rather than say lowercase y, in which case that would mean in this very truncated shorthand the marginal of y. It's really an abuse of notation. You should be aware though because of course uh, you know x is just a variable denoting the value and there's other than the fact that the symbol happens to be a little x there's nothing in this notation that tells you directly that this is the marginal of, of x. So you just have to be aware of that convention. Maybe we'll use that a little bit to, so you see how, how that pops up. So, so similarly, you know, we might write p of y to mean the marginal of y. So the only difference here is that I use the lowercase y. Now here's another very common definition very commonly used concept. The conditional conditional PMF or sometimes we say conditional distribution of X given that Y very in a variable takes the value little y. So this is we denote it by using this notation, probably p of little x given y, vertical bar, and that's just the probability that x equals this value given y equals this value. So you remember on back when we were talking about conditional probabilities, so this is just the probability of the event that x takes this value given the event that y takes this value. So we've defined conditional probabilities for events, and this is the just that just using that previous definition. And uh, remark using the definition of conditional probability. So remember that this is let me put a different color here. So this is so remember. Oh, and I have to make a. This, this is when the probability that y equals y is strictly positive. Otherwise, this is not, this is not defined. But this thing, we can get another expression for using the definition of conditional probability for events divided by the probability of the event that y equals y. So that's where we needed this. And what's this? Well, it's just the joint PMF divided by the marginal of Y. So I might write P of Y for the marginal of Y. Technically speaking, to be more precise, I should put the Y here. But we'll drop it for now to get so you get used to that notation. So that's a nice expression for the conditional PMF. And another very useful concept, which we haven't talked about before and comes into play when you have multiple random variables, is what's called conditional expectation. So the 
conditional. We talked about expectation. Now we have the conditional expectation. Conditional expectation. Very, very important tool. So conditional expectation of x given y equals little y. And of course, and we're going to need this condition when, I'll write it this way, the marginal of y on that value is positive, strictly positive, is the, it's basically, it's the expected value under this conditional distribution. So we write it this way, e of capital X given y equals y, and it's just the expected value, which you'll see in a second. So it's the sum over x's, all the possible values that the random variable x could take. That value, value of x times the conditional PMF, times the conditional distribution given this particular value of little y. And as usual with expectations, we also have to qualify this by saying when this sum is well defined. Well defined. So this is just, just think about it as we get some new, so our conditional PMF defines some new probability distribution on x's, and this is just exactly the expected value of x under this new distribution over x's, over the values that x might take. That, that's all it is. And sometimes we write, so this this conditional expectation is given this particular value of y, and so therefore this quantity is a it's a number, right? This is a number, but if we allowed y to be not take a particular value to but to be random, then this quantity is a random variable. So sometimes when we say the conditional expectation of x given y, not y equals little y, we mean this. And actually, in fact, usually this is what people mean by conditional expectation of x given y, is that is this random variable that depends on the random variable y.